Hola, esto es Blue Collar Real Estate. Mi nombre es Gregorio Mayo. And I'm Ryan Hergett. I don't really know exactly what Greg just launched out right there, but I think it's that uh, welcome to Blue Collar Real Estate. We've got a cool, cool show. I'm excited to, excited to dive into a few things. We've learned some stuff over the last few weeks, haven't we? We have, and we've got some cool stuff to roll out today. But before we do, don't forget, found you, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review, leave a comment. Again, we'd love to hear from you, and if unless you're a butthead, interact with you. So uh, what are we doing today? <laughs> Today, we are going to really dive into, you know, you and I both love construction, right? But we are salespeople. We are real estate salespeople. And we both kind of took a detour with things last week because we had a really cool client that, uh, you know, I've been working with for a while and you've gotten to know pretty well. And uh, he was not getting his house done. We're trying to get his house sold and he wasn't getting it done. And there was just some small improvements that needed done in order to help really maximize what we can get this thing sold for, right? I mean, just, you know, just general stuff that, almost any home, nine out of 10 homes that you walk into, there's just a lot of little things that need done, but the combination of all those little things makes a gigantic difference at the end of the day when you go to present your home into the market. Right? And Im- important to note that if you're a homeowner, there's a stuff you know that needs to be done that you yep. just haven't got to. There's stuff in my house. Yep. We've been there seven years. There's stuff I was going to get to when we moved in. You're still thinking about it. Well, you know what they say, the cobbler's kid never has new <laughs> shoes. Um <laughs> But then there's also stuff that, as a homeowner, after a few years, you just kind of overlook. Yep, absolutely. You quit seeing the cracks in the drywall and this and that. And yeah, we, so we had that opportunity last week. Um, because of that opportunity and dealing with a new hardware store, we have a new sponsor. We do. Ashy Slashy's Hardware Emporium. <laughs> oh, they and Elk provided Grove. the uh, the uh, floral arrangement we're going to show here in a moment. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, formerly known as Brock Williams Hardware in Elk Grove. Um, yes. Fans of the Evil Dead will understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so w- we had an opportunity to kind of dig in and get some stuff done for this guy. And I think the transformation for no more time than we spent yeah. and no more money than he spent was really dramatic. Well, and that's what we really want to share with everybody on this episode is, you know, what are, what are some practical, practi- I'm so I'm such a good talker, <laughs> I talk real nice, <laughs> but what are some actionable and practical things that you can do to your house? Because everybody wants to get their home ready to sell in the spring, right? right. Okay. So we've got three months before the you know peak of the spring season hits in, you know, being middle of December right now. And everybody's got this time and over a week or two, you can knock out the majority of these projects that we're going to show show everybody here in a minute. And most of them are less than a hundred bucks when you look at each one individually. And at the end of the day, it's several small things that you can do that are going to just make your home pop when you put it into the market. So I'm excited to explore that with everybody. I am too. And, and when we get into what we're doing mm-hmm. as realtors um, with regard to this, which we'll get into yeah. at the end, uh, I'm real excited to roll that out too, because it's just another way that we can help people get ready to sell and maximize the dollar that they get when they do sell. Which is huge because everybody's looking for the best deal, right? Everybody wants to get their home sold for the top dollar. They want to make sure that, you know, they're putting themselves in the best situation to be successful, right? And a lot of times for people that's, they don't know somebody, you know, maybe a handyman, maybe somebody that can help take care of a lot of these little bitty small projects. And that's where we want to help. You and I both love doing this. Now, we're not trying to be full-time contractors, but right. stretch the imagination. And we're certainly not qualified electricians, at least me. No. However, what can we do to help? That's what we're excited to share with the market today. So let's kind of get started. Let's kind of show everybody what we were doing and how we were able to really take a really a cool house in a very cool area and do a, a few small things and make a world of difference. Yeah, let's, let's just dig into the pictures. If you're not watching, if you're listening on one of the podcast platforms, um, jump over to our YouTube channel when you get a chance and, and kind of take a look at some of these before and after. So um, the first one is going to be, okay, so in this picture, he ended up with this little half wall, weird, funky area and just put a piece of plywood down. Yeah. Just something to cover it. Sure. Which is fine. What we did is went to Home Depot and they're not sponsors yet. Wait. Ah, there you are. They're not sponsors yet. <laughs> but we went to Home Depot, and we got butcher block countertop off the shelf. Yep. Uh, we made some modifications to it. We cut the curve in it. Uh, ended up using the leftover piece for a for piece a support, for a support. Yeah. And um, the difference for no more money than this thing cost, keep in mind, people, it's a stock piece. That you can buy it on the store. So if we go to the next slide, we'll, we'll actually be able to see what this finished product looked like. So, Greg, what's what's a, what's a piece of countertop like this cost at the store? Ah. Uh, I think for the size that we got, that was a couple hundred bucks. So for a couple hundred dollars and... 100, 160 know, something. 
Sweet. So 160 bucks, and what would you have into it? Maybe three hours of time total? Yeah. By the time I cut, finished, yeah, three hours. You made a area that was okay and made it very, very cool. There's a before and after as uh, Jason clicks and, and through it. Let's show that side shot because we saved money. Instead of buying a corbel for a bracket for that overhang piece over the dog bowls, the next slide will show we just creatively used our cutoff piece, yeah. remilled it. Um, so, again, for not a lot of money, we were able to make a difference. Now, when you walk in the garage door, that's what you see instead and, of a piece of plywood. And who doesn't love and always comment when they see things like a butcher block countertop, right? I mean, I know when I'm showing homes, I walk through 40 homes plus every single week. And there is not one time when you see something awesome like that that somebody doesn't point it out, which is what yeah. you want. When people walk in the door, you want to make those amazing first impressions because that's all you get. And that's something that's going to help distinguish your home if you're selling it from the other home next door that doesn't have have that and it's a small improvement doesn't necessarily make your home go up in value five thousand dollars but man it makes it stand apart in a gigantic way right and if it doesn't and we we mentioned this several times before but i want to say it again if it doesn't necessarily make it go up in value several thousand dollars that added detail will help it sell quicker 100 percent of the time 100 percent of the time so what else do we do to this house um so next slide there you go so that's the opening to the basement yep. the homeowner had put in basement stairs and they cut this opening in. Uh, there's a gate right there that was, he made it and it was kind of cool. Yeah, it was cool. Yep. But this needed finished. And what we looked at when we saw it was we needed to touch up the drywall. We needed to put a trim piece on it. Um, and we needed to touch up the paint. Yep. And so the next slide will show what we did. And so in, in, in this case right here, you went and bought a handful of pieces of trim board, right? Yeah, that's just stock stuff off the shelf. It's stock trim board off the shelf. And completely finished that out and we repainted it around it of course but with a stock piece of trim board and this took you maybe an hour of time total to do this portion of the project yeah nothing and to it we knocked it out and there's less than probably 50 dollars in material cost and an hour of time to do a project like this and then and i'll just give a shout out the the drywall touch up the mud work and the paint matching was done by the guy i use all the time juan yeah um, juan does a great job and look at that and and this is about and we talked about this before too this is about having the right people right got to have the right team you and i talked the other day i can do drywall yep. i can touch up mud and i certainly can paint but juan does it way more efficiently way faster and his finished product is better than my finished product which we're going to look at some not finished product product blah man i can't talk to that what's wrong with me today <laughs> nevertheless we'll just laugh about it and move on but we're going to look at a drywall project that was not an acceptable finished project here in just a second oh yeah so, i can't wait from another appointment i was on so. so the next slide so this is a stairway so a basic stairway into a basement right yeah that you know doesn't scream sexy doesn't scream wow buy me right and and you can see the giant gap on the bottom and and somebody had laid a piece of pine in there to try to make a skirt and yeah it's it when you that opening that we just saw mm -hmm. we finished trimming that out then you look around the corner and you see that oh other way you look around the corner and see that so what we did is added skirt boards had those caulk sealed and painted yep. added a handrail and we had our carpet company yep come in and do carpet because ryan and i aren't laying carpet no, that's not one of our skill sets. So the so this simple basement entry going down into the basement went from this, you know, dreary type look into a finished project that has, you know, beautifully painted skirt. It's got carpet on the stairs. Now I don't know if we can go to the next uh, next slide here real quick, but it it ended up amazingly immaculate. It, it just looks home. It feels like home. It doesn't feel like you're walking down into a dungeon of a basement now every time you go down there. And and you're exactly right. And so when you walk by that opening, when you look over the rail now, you don't see this sort of dirty boards and all that. What you see is a nice finished entry into the basement. And the other thing to note um, with this house in particular, the basement's nice. It is nice. And, 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 you know, I think people don't always appreciate the fact when they're going to sell their house or when they're buying it is this is where you raise your family. This is the place where you create your memories. And this is the place where so many of life events happen and people want to feel good about that space. And if with every single time they walk down to a nice basement to do their laundry in this house, hey, how do you make them feel? And walking down a set of, uh, a, you know, a set of basements like this that or stairs like this, I should say, it just makes you feel at home. It makes you feel good about spending that extra maybe two thousand dollars on a house like this yeah. versus not. So uh, illustrious producer, if we can go to the next slide. <laughs> 
So this is the same house. And again, this was a house built back in the, I believe it was the 60s or late 50s, if I'm not mistaken. 50s, yeah. Yeah, late 50s. And, and you know, it just had some of the older trim around it. You know, it had just been simply lived in. It wasn't in bad shape by any stretch of the imagination. But again, we're looking for very cost of, cost-effective ways to make this home pop, make it feel fresh and not feel, you know, slightly dated perhaps. And this was a homeowner project. Um, and if you're watching, homeowner, I love you, buddy. But just like the rest of us you don't get to stuff he had gotten the casing off yeah and he had the casing out in the garage um but it all comes down to time just like we didn't have time to touch up all the drywall so we hired that out yep. he didn't have time to get back to this so um we jumped in very simple process and if we can go to the next slide this is what it looked like when we were done and how long you did the casing i did the casing which yeah. i was impressed i, I was mean sort of proud of myself on that one now you did a hell of a job so how long you know how long did it take you to case out seven doors we had probably what two and a half three hours total in yeah. that project i mean i was done with that by noon the first day that we started yeah. this project and you know i you know i was a little particular i was trying to make it not suck because i like this client a lot and you know this house is a super super cool house but uh so we took our time. We did it right. I'm certainly not a pro doing that. I'm sure a pro could have knocked that out in probably an hour and a half flat, and it would have looked perfect. But but nevertheless, it looks pretty good, and it really just helped freshen the entire hallway up where Absolutely. there's just a lot of stairs. Absolutely. Stairs doors. A lot of doors. Oh, yeah. There's seven of them. There, yeah, right there in the hallway. So, um, But it just looks great. And again, Juan painted the doors. Yep. And painted the trim to make everything bright and pop. And it is such an amazing change you know i just you know i'm redoing another house for myself right now and when you paint trim when you paint doors when you paint ceilings especially with just a nice semi-gloss white or ceiling white it is just every degree of change when you do that it takes you know you know you were talking when we opened the show up about things that you know you don't think will make a big difference or things that you just kind of get used to as yeah. you live in a house well man the dull white on a ceiling or the dull white as you just kind of rub your fingers on the door every single day that you're in the house it just takes its toll on it and everything could use a fresh coat of paint from, paint from time to time and it just changes everything when you put a fresh coat of semi-gloss on the trim or doors or ceiling white up there just, oh absolutely it, it, it makes everything glow you said that i wish i had pictures of the bathroom because we did the ceiling and the trim and the window but uh, um let's go to the next slide so the next thing we really want to focus on are you know maybe some small improvements that you can make okay we took a look at a few projects you know some home depot or lowe's trips projects right yeah but now let's take a look at some examples of things to do in your house to again really help create that pop that are small little you know, details like kitchen hardware. Okay. Kitchen hardware is one of those things. I love doing this. I don't know why I just buy the templates and I oh, love yeah. going over to my customer's house and just doing it. It's a great way to go have a beer with somebody and just get to know them a little bit better while you're doing something that's going to, oh, yeah. you know, help their home sell. So we wanted to share some examples of what to do and what not to do when you're decorating. Now, if I was buying a beach home in Belize, this type of kitchen hardware <laughs> would be fantastic, right? But most of the homes that I have the opportunity to help people with are here in Indiana. And so there is two, two hard and fast rules when it comes to kitchen hardware. And this is not something that is on the recommended list if you're watching on YouTube again right now. Now, let's stay on this shot for just a second because in an earlier episode, we talked about why are you remodeling? Is it for you or is it for resale? Yep. And I want to encourage everybody out there that's seeing these this hardware set here if that's what you dig do it all day long know that that is not going to help sell your house it is a hyper niche thing that while does look cool in your you know your perspective that is not an overwhelming majority of people are going to agree with you in that situation and what we're focusing on today is helping your house sell for more money so if you're looking at that going i have those and i love them that's awesome. When you get ready to sell your house, put them in a box, take them to the next one. Let us put the right hardware on. Absolutely. So let's talk and let's look at two different examples of hardware that is acceptable in almost every single capacity at this point. So if we look at the next slide, this is going to show you some white cabinets with a brushed nickel or even stainless steel um, you know, piece of hardware installed. Mm -hmm. And so many people just, oh, you know, it looks good. But man, when you look at a photo like this, your eye just goes to those different reference points. Yep. It's something that's going to bring your eye in. And when you've got a nice set of cabinets, this is a very inexpensive way to make a gigantic difference. You can buy these things for a buck fifty a piece, or you know, three dollars on the high end. And then you go buy a set of two dollar templates, and you have a cordless drill and an hour. You can have your entire kitchen done. 
Yep. Or if not, call me and I'll help you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plug. So the next one um, is the oil rub bronze. Now, I particularly didn't like this when I first saw it a handful of years ago, but now I love it. I think the oil rub bronze, especially against a white background, is so, so timeless and beautiful. Yeah, I dig it too. And, you know, when it first came on, I was in the lumber business back mm -hmm. then. And I thought, well, this isn't going to last. I was a little wrong because <laughs> um, here we are 17 years later and it's still here. But yeah, so if you go with the nickel, the brushed nickel or the stainless or the oil rub bronze, those are your only two that you want to think about. Yep. Uh, the thing that was big in the 80s, the brass. Yeah. Unfortunately, the brass has to go. And, you know, same thing with like brass doorknobs, door hinges, you know, faucets. You know, those are other areas where, you know, I helped a lot of people build homes back in the late 90s, early 2000s, and brass was the rage then. That's what everybody was putting in their homes, and it was okay. And we used to like talk about it like it was a great thing. And now, when's the last time somebody like excitedly got, you know, was talking about brass hardware? Every time, I don't know about you, but every time I walk into a master bath, from that time period where there's the brass faucets, the brass yeah. lights over and, and the brass doorknobs and, and everything's brass and glass. I hear Robin Leach in my head <laughs> going champagne dreams, lifestyles of the rich and famous. Oh yeah. Do you not hear that? I do. I not necessarily hear that, but I have seen, I've seen that show. I've not seen many of the shows that you reference. but it's but. just, or I, I see <laughs> welcome to my home. It's going to be huge um, <laughs> because it, it's just, it's so dated and, and it's gaudy. It's just not something that every buyer in today's marketplace is looking for. So what do we have next on slide here? So one of these next items here, Ooh. okay, this is a uh, house I was in the other day getting ready for a listing appointment. And, you know, you talk about little things that you can do, and I'm not talking about the ceiling in this case, which is certainly going to have to be redone. But, you know, removing things from the top of the cabinets, making the space feel larger, okay? So many people don't want to take their own stuff down and fear that, you know, well, you know, you know I still have to live in the house, right? But no, you don't. You need to make other people see how they can live in this house. Great point. Because the goal is to sell it. And that includes everything from personal belongings. If it is not necessary to everyday life, so I'm talking kitchens, closets, cupboards, bedrooms, bathrooms, every area of the house that you're not using or you know that you're using every day, if it's not the items like pots and pans and clothes and boxes and games and all that stuff, it has to be boxed up neatly and put away. You don't have to get rid of it, but go, go to Walmart or Target, buy some totes and put that stuff away and just keep what you need for everyday life and use that in the one or two cabinets there. And, and so what I tell people is if you haven't used it in the last three months, whatever it may be, yeah. bathroom, bedroom, kitchen, whatever, box it and put it away. That's it. That's um, much more simplified than what I just got done rambling. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on to the next slide here, this was the example that I mentioned earlier in the show that That's this sexy. is not an acceptable drywall repair. And again, I know that we all can go buy some spackling at Lowe's and we can buy one of the, you know, you know, mud scraper things. And I know that we all can <laughs> watch a YouTube video. <laughs> But then there is acceptable for this. This looks awesome. And then there is not acceptable. And this falls into the latter category, unfortunately. Two things on that. If you call it a mud scraper thing, you're probably not a drywall finisher. <laughs> um, number two, this picture here. Oh, look, I can do this backwards. This area here clearly suggests that the guy did it with his hands. He didn't have a mud scraper thing. I mean, that's horrible. I, I give him an A for trying hard and a not an A for finished project. But nevertheless, that is an example of maybe you do want to hire a guy out to come take care of this. If you don't know somebody and you're in the Indian, why can't I talk today? I need to slow down talking like <laughs> you were saying earlier. But if you're in the Indianapolis area, we can certainly help connect you with people, but it's not hard to find a good drywall person, but this is not an acceptable repair, especially if you just slap some paint on the top of it. So what's the next one we have on deck here? All right, so this is another not acceptable drywall repair that stemmed from a roof leak, I'm presuming, since there's no uh, bathroom above this one. But with this, with this particular repair, what screams that there was a problem here, and it doesn't matter if it's been fixed, if you literally just took some drywall putty and scraped it down the ceiling and said, yeah, it's good enough. But it, it, you're right, it screams there was a problem, but it also screams, I didn't hire a professional to fix it. Right. So then that begs the question, did it actually get fixed, whatever that problem Certainly. was? And we know, guys, um, well, Mead did that house in Avon for us. Yeah. Took out the wall and did all that stuff. And he's got a guy who can match any ceiling texture 
which if you can see in the picture, that's a textured ceiling. It That's a true art form. Yeah. To be able to, and he would be able to go in and walk out of that room in two hours and you would never know once the mud dried that there was a fix. Well, and that's so necessary if, again, we're talking about our original goal of, you know, you're going to get your home ready to sell in the spring and details that are going to make it pop, make it sell for more money, right? Right. And when it when you show examples of repairs like this and you demonstrate this in your house, this is something that you do need to bring a professional out because this is going to scream that there was a problem or is a problem. And then people start looking for other problems. Okay. When they see one or two things, now all of a sudden their antennas go up and they're now hyper sensitive to any other problems right. that may persist. And everybody, I don't care who you are, when you're buying a home or selling a home, you have a number. And what I mean by a number is that number is you walk into the house and you see one thing that's, yeah, we could do that later. Two things that, well, yeah, we could do that later too. Well, everybody, by the time they get to three or five or 10, whatever your number is, that house needs too much work and people are not willing to buy it, right. period. So these are our examples of, you know, this is probably a repair that would cost maybe 250 bucks to get done the right way. And then you, maybe you paint the ceiling yourself to save some money, but nevertheless, it's a repair that you could get the right guy out there and it's gonna make the house look brand new again. Absolutely. Period. So. And do we have another one? Yeah, we got a few yep. more. So this is probably one of the most common things that I see on inspection reports is missing smoke detectors. It comes up every single time because, you know, this one was, you know, up in a high ceiling and I'm guessing that they just got pissed off and just took it off instead of changing the battery and getting back up there. Exactly. It started beeping because yeah. it needed a battery change and somebody hit it with a broomstick and knocked it down. But this comes up all the time in inspections and, you know, a smoke detector costs about 12 bucks to order one on Amazon or wherever you want to buy one. You can spend more if you want to. But this is your safety, your family's safety. I've known people that have unfortunately passed away in homes and this is such a, a simple simple thing that you can have in your home that protects you and your family and then more importantly is something that's going to have to be addressed when you come come time to sell your home and the home inspection comes around and now if 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 you don't have a hardwired and uh that one actually is uh not a battery operated that's mm -hmm. probably battery backup but if you don't have a hardwired one you can spend just a couple dollars more now and they have government certified 10-year batteries on that's awesome um, and they started doing that for Section 8 housing and, and some housing uh, where people are renting and may not have the money to. Sure. And, and maybe the landlords aren't quite always, you know, doing the right things. But my point is spend at that point 15, 16 bucks, put it in once and forget about it for a decade. Yeah. And, and again, it's such a small thing. It's something that costs less than $25 per and you can, A, protect your family infinitely more. And secondly, it's something that you're going to have to address anyway. So get it done up front so people are, aren't, again, what we just talked about, looking for another problem. And, and let me just interject something here quick because when I, <laughs> when I was an inspector, and I've heard this from listing clients too, but people say, well, I had to leave some stuff so the inspector could find something. Oh, they're going to find plenty. Let it, me assure you, <laughs> if, if you're watching, let me assure you, I don't care how new your house is, how well built it was, anything you want to throw out there about your house, the inspector will find stuff. That's their job. Yeah, that's the job. In footnote. <laughs> right. So what do we have next? And no, oh man, this one Ugh. is so big. It's so simple too. You can go buy a $2 roller tool and a $10 or $10 roll of screen. And this is not a hard repair to do yourself. No. I've done this myself. You watch a YouTube video and you can do this yourself. But again, when you see torn window screens, what says more that I haven't been taking care of my house? Right. And it's just, it's something so small. It's not a big deal. And again, if you don't care about that when you're living there, that's up to you and that's cool. But if you're selling your house, this is something that A is going to come up and B does not present your home in the top light it could, which is the goal if you're trying to get top dollar for your house. Right. So torn window screens, $2 tool at Lowe's, a roll of, of screen, and you can knock it out. It's so easy. And the spline. Um, and the spline. That's helpful. Oh, weather stripping. Oh, man. Dealing with this this one and them not sure that this was a problem indeed. I'm like, this is absolutely a problem indeed. <laughs> now, the jam there where it's scratched up, clearly this is done from a dog uh, or, a really Kruger. or an aggressive child. But <laughs> we'll say dog. Um, so the the jam, you just sand it a little bit, get some wood putty, yeah. exterior grade wood putty, sand that again, paint it, that's done. The weather stripping just pulls right out. 
It does. And you can literally just buy rolls of that yeah. at the home improvement store. And there, now let me give you a word of caution here, folks. There's several different kinds of weather stripping, even for doors. So when you go, take that piece with you so you can match the profile. Um, it just snaps back in. That's not, it. not only does it function better and look better when you're showing the house, but you've already helped your energy efficiency because you're not getting cold air drafting. Absolutely. Out. That's a big one people just don't think of is, you know, how much air is getting around the door seal and then under the door as well. Yeah. I mean, those thresholds, it's such an easy adjustment, but people are just aren't always aware. So I think we've got one or two more uh, photos here to look at. Okay. We've just got another example of a uh, door jam here that's been aggressively mutilated. Um, let's go ahead and skip to the next one here real quick. Oh, boy, there's a third one in this house. That's awesome. <laughs> that just is – I feel sorry for the dog, to be real frank, but because um, apparently he wanted in, and they were like, no. But, yeah, so same thing, sand. Um, yeah. And and y'all need to know, I, the repairs on that door, we're talking about all those doors, you've got maybe two hours in all of them combined yeah. and probably 20 bucks in material. That's it. It's a, such a small, small improvement that makes a gigantic difference. Now, the next one is something that we are not qualified to take care of ourselves, although it's not very hard, but the electrical stuff. Oh, I thought you meant changing the light bulb. I can well, do that. Well, the light bulb's also helpful. Getting a light bulb <laughs> changed, you know, again, it, you lead with your best foot forward, right? And, you know, light bulbs being out. The next thing I was going to talk about is is updating light fixtures, okay? Yep. You can get newer updated light fixtures that, you know, are, you know, just a little bit more 2019, 2020 than something that was installed back in 2003 when I think this home was built. So again, just what are the things that you can do that cost less than a hundred bucks that are going to make gigantic improvements down the road? Kitchen and bathroom lights are a very, very easy way to do that. Maybe a nice pendant over your kitchen, perhaps or anything else so Greg did we lose you no <laughs> no I was just not sure if you were going to stop um you got really excited about the light fixtures I'm not sure it was going makes on. such a huge difference well and I want to tell people uh, you can change one of those yourself if you're comfortable yeah um if not call me I've got electricians that are licensed have decades of experience that I know and trust um don't go to the yellow pages no a lot of the young people are like what's a yellow page right anyway it's that page you get it at the closing of your house. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, so exemption page. light fixtures and stay away from brass. So I think that's the last one that we have as far as simple. Oh, my gosh. How did I forget this nasty <laughs> one? How did I forget this nasty one? So faucets. Okay. You can go get a nice Moen faucet instead of this, like, crystallized plastic there that is corroded and not nice anymore. And you can get a nice new Moen faucet or Delta faucet for anywhere between 45 and 65 bucks, right? Yeah. And again, simple, simple repairs. It's two lines, two bolts, and you're done. Now, let me ask you, if you walk into this house and you see that you're a buyer, what's the first thing you think? Not excited. I'm not brushing my teeth at that sink. Ever. I'm not right? rinsing water in my mouth out of that <laughs> faucet. So small, again, just a small nominal investment that you can make that is going to make a gigantic difference when you sell your house. So that's all we've got as far as slides. So, I mean, we've talked about just kind of recapping everything we've talked about here, Greg. So we've easy improvements, right? Easy improvements that aren't going to cost you an arm and a leg. They're going to make a gigantic difference when you do introduce your home into the market come spring. So knobs, hardware, smoke detectors, um, backsplash tile. We didn't talk about that, but that's an easy add. Um, paint touch up. You made this in the notes, and I want to make sure we say it out loud. Stick with beige, gray, or grayish, which is actually a thing a designer told me it was. <laughs> um, but stick with those neutral colors, right? Whether you lean toward warm or cool, gray or beige, is up to you, but stick with those neutral colors. Um, well, and just to piggyback on that real quick, I, I think one of the reasons why it's important, you know, I, I want to take that a step deeper. Everybody's like, oh, I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. Well, in the case of selling your house, Okay, we're trying to appeal to the most number of people possible. Okay, We're trying to get people to walk in and say, I don't have to do anything to this house, which is when they're willing to pay the most money for it, when right. they don't have to take on any projects. And it's not that they necessarily love gray or beige, but it goes with everything, and that's right. what's in style. And it's back. we're back to your HGTV in a home. And the other thing is, uh, and we'll talk about the outside a little bit more when we get towards spring, because right now, on a day when it's freezing, it'd be tough to power wash yeah. your vinyl siding or whatever. Um, the other thing I want to talk, the last thing I want to say about this kind of stuff is carpet cleaning yeah. and a cleaning service in general. 
it, it's you know again going back to what you said to open the show up you know we all live in our homes right and when you walk through your home it's easy to maybe not pay attention to the dust that's accumulated in the you know along the floorboards or the dust that's on the fans you know the paddles of your fan so to speak or you know cleaning up your vent registers little bitty things that again you want people to walk in and say, this home has been well taken care of. This home looks awesome and I want to buy it. That's the whole goal. Right. Not to skimp on maybe, I mean, hell, if you did all of this stuff, we're talking a thousand dollars that you can spend on your house. And over the next three months, you can have it looking like a boss ready to go on the market come first of spring. So all that to say, I, I think we should. I think we should tell them. I'm excited to tell everybody about this. Do you tell them? So Greg and I are not contractors, right? Greg used to be. I used to work in the contracting business for a very brief period of time. But we both have a strong passion for that industry. We have a strong passion for doing things like this, blue-collar real estate. We both love working on homes. We love taking something that's not necessarily awesome and making it awesome, right? Heck yeah. And we know that that's not something that everybody is passionate about, doing that kind of work, putting on a tool belt from time to time. So here's what we're going to start offering is, we're going to be willing to help you do some of this stuff. So if you need some hardware installed, Blue Collar Real Estate is here to help you out. Okay, If maybe you need a light switch, we can't do that for you because we're not licensed electricians. But you can get connected with one of our contractors that does that for a living. They do that every day. They're going to show up on time and do what they say they're going to do, right? Right. Okay. And so small things like this, maybe you need a wall or two touched up. Maybe you need some trim done. Maybe you need one of those faucets changed. Those are all things that Greg and I would love the opportunity to help you out with. And whether we can't do it ourselves, we will bring a team of people over to help you get your home on the market and ready to rock and roll. And imagine... Let's just for a second. I'm a listing agent. You're a home seller. Yep. I walk into your house, and if I'm worth my salt at all, I'm going to walk around and talk about things that need to be addressed. Yep. Um, that may or may not cause anxiety. You may or may not have time. You may or may not have the money, yada, yada, yada. But we walk through and we talk about these things. Now, you and I are going to take it a step further. We are. So here's the things that need to be addressed. Now, we're going to take care of it for you. We're going to come out and we're actually going to help you put that hardware on. We can't buy it for you, but what we can do is you buy it, we, we will come put it on. If you need to buy the doorknobs or the hinges that we need to update, you can spend $25 on Amazon and another $15 on a door hinge or something, and we will come put it on for you. So those are small things. While we're certainly not trying to be contractors, we want to help you overcome the hurdles that it takes to introduce a home into the market. And the best way to do that is for us to just strap on the tool belts now and again, um, turn on some jazz music. I know your favorite on the job site, but um, <laughs> maybe some Van Halen. Uh, uh, either I could do right. both, except for the Gary Sharon one. Although I like Extreme, but he wasn't good. But they had that one song. Well, anyway. So anyway, we're anyway. not your contractors, but we are the guys who are here to help you out. So we're excited. Blue collar real estate going to be taking a new direction for the end of 2019, headed into 2020. Greg and I are excited to help some people out. And we're rolling up a website. It'll be up blue collar dash real estate. That will be up by the time. Uh, well, not by the time this episode hits, but give us another week. Yeah, a week and it'll be ready to rock and roll. So check that out at bluecollar-realestate.com. And I think that's it for this episode, right? Again, yeah, that's it. But don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We'd love to hear from you. And put a comment or two in there, especially about Greg. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you that's damn it. right. We appreciate everybody's time today. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah.